Okay guys, this is part of the online Kings of War League, a call to arms tree that started at the end of 2019 and this is Basileia vs Night Stalkers, round 1. Hello there! I like to watch battle reports to get better at games. So I started making short, summarized battle reports that focus on learning points. So welcome to my channel, Newbie Dice. Do like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoy my videos. So this league started in 2019 um, in October when 3rd uh, edition just released and at that time there were no list builders yet. So um, we are all back to traditional list building. I used Excel while my opponent wrote it on paper which is even more traditional. So the first thing I wanted to try in 3rd uh, edition was the, the regiment prices for items. So I tried to abuse that by having 3 knight regiments. In my list, I still have an Ogre Palace Guard and I gave it haste to keep up with the rest of my army. The only shooting element I have is the, is the Scouts and I have for heroes, I have both Nayas and Ur Elohi. So I wanted to uh, make use of their Nimble there. And I do have an Elohi Horde with, with uh, Aegis of the Elohi to heal a little bit more wanted to stay in the battle a little bit longer and so his list he has uh, three hammers anchoring the the list that is a uh, two blood worm hordes and a reaper regiment now third edition is still pretty new and i haven't gotten to know all the armies yet so i didn't know the blood worms were hard hitting units because in second edition i think they were just uh chaff or rather high nerf but low weak attack units and reapers as well i didn't know a regiment had packed so many attacks in it and he boosted by having two horrors i think i think it's two horrors with uh with this uh, aura for vicious for infantry oh no it's just one horror with the aura and one banshee so um he also anchors with two planet apparitions that has lots of heal and he has a Terror and two mind creatures and two scarecrow regiments. So this is the deployment, and I do have a scouting unit that's the Sisterhood Scouts, and they scouted forward. I like to deploy them in a way that they can just um, move into scout into terrain because uh, in the scout move it's unaffected by terrain. So I scout in the terrain and hopefully sit there and keep shooting until I get charged. And they have 14, 16 nerf, although a defense tree. Yeah with a hindered charge they are probably able to take a hit yeah so my opponents you can see the names of the units over there i can't remember these two individuals which is which so yeah one interesting thing i saw was that both square crow uh, regiments were on the side these are definitely the chaff yeah and i was able to place this early low high on the extreme left flank and for the right flank, I place uh, one of the regiment of knights. So, turn one, I went first, and immediately I did this maneuver on the left, which was to move the early low high 20, 20 inches and turn to face the flank of his entire army. And I think he is not able to see me as well. So I moved up and turned to face, and it's out of the front out of this unit. So there was nothing that was able to charge it at this point of time and I'm threatening the flank of uh, probably four units. One, two, three and this hall over here and maybe some of these monsters over at the back. Yeah. So I tried to do the same thing with the girl panthers on the other side because they do have move 20 and nimble. But um, their nerf is very low, 911 with defense 3. And the opponent does have uh, two mind creatures which is lightning bolts. And I think on hindsight, maybe I should have put Nayas on the extreme right flank. I also think I made a mistake here with this uh, unit of Paladin Knights on the right. Uh, it should have moved the full 16 and just face forward for now. Uh, but instead, I decided to move 8 and turn. And you can see it's still a long ways away from any action. So you'll see over the course of this game, it took a long time to get into the heat of battle. Yeah, the rest of my army just shuffled forwards. Well, the opponent is Night Stalkers and all of them have stealth, so 
nothing good to shoot at so when there's nothing good to shoot at i'll just shoot at the unit that's i uh, have the chance of taking off so the lowest nerf and defense unit that i can fling damage on it and hopefully take it off uh, after a few rounds so i shot at this uh, scarecrows over here and probably because uh it's further away from the planet apparitions that has heal and there's no inspiring on the left side all right so bottom of one the opponents shuffled upwards and one thing you can see is the mind screech on the top right shot at the girl panthers and it's dead i'm not sure what the other mind screech did and one thing uh, interesting that my opponent did was uh, firstly this uh, unit was just in the lake but he decided to move all the way up and so there was no part of the lake exposed and it is within charge range of the elo high uh, the other thing was he casted bastion on this planar operation but i think it failed to go off uh, which was a major bummer because of what's going to happen next um so Let's talk about the middle. The middle bloodworms has had nothing screening them. And so I just triple charged them. I was like, okay, these three units should be able to take out the horde. And true enough, it did. So I triple charged them. And I moved Nayers back so that uh, this uh, 50 millimeter gap, I think there'll be limited options from my opponent what can come into it. So let's talk about the left side. Um, let's rewind a little bit on the left side. So the only unit he turned to face, sort of uh, deal with the deal with the Ur Elohi is this unit, but he also exposed the flank here from for the Elohi, the Ur Elohi. Not sure if the Reapers could see me. So on the left side, the Ur Elohi charged into the flank with the knights in front, killed the scarecrows, and I turned to face the rest of the army in front of me yeah and my sister's turn to have line of sight to continue shooting at the scarecrows so the middle i i talked about it just now and the right side this is where uh, my uh elo high hot charged into it i should have dealt eight but i spiked for ten and on top of that, that i spiked uh eight on the on the nerve row so i spiked a total of three above average and that is just enough to waver it at 18 so bloodworms are bloodworms unfortunately the nerf is a little bit low at 18 yeah and also he failed to trigger the the bastion if not i wouldn't would have another needed another one more to waver it so this went uh, really well for me and you can see the knights moved another eight inches and pivoted a little bit more and it, I think it's still out of uh, 16 of the charge here. So let's move on to the next one. So let's see. Let's go from left to right. Uh, the Reapers didn't have the advantage of the horror, Vicious Aura. But it has 25 attacks with Elite. So that would be um, two-thirds of this thing would be 16. And of uh, the 8, 16 sorry the eight misses there will be another three of them will be one so there should be about 18 hits and nine wounds and he will deal he dealt eight and so he needed seven twice to to break yeah um so he didn't break me uh if he had rolled nine he only needs six twice which is still a 50 50 yeah, so this was a little bit lucky on my part, and I realized how powerful Reapers are after this game. And so he had a bunch of things charged. So this uh, Mind Screech charged my flank and took off my, basically dealt a little bit of damage, but took off my Thunderous. Um, this this uh, units were charged, but no damage here, but the Terror wavered my wavered my ogre palace guard so that's a bummer over there so look at uh, this unit the uh, bloodworms so it's since it got wavered oops sorry since it got wavered what it did instead was to back up and now it did expose the little bit of the leg there and then apparitions they get to heal so he healed off four of the wounds 
So what happened next? So let's go from left to right once again. So I was pretty lucky over here because um, my knights without any thunderers plus the Ur Elohi charged the reapers. Let's see how much I should have dealt. Um, my my Ur Elohi should have six attacks, so that will be four hits and about three wounds. Yeah, and then the knights will have about eleven hits with no um, with no crushing. That will be about five point five wounds. Yeah, so that would be 8.5, 9.5 in total with the Dread of the Ur Elohi. And I needed 16 to break it. So yeah, I needed like a 7, 6.5 twice. So that's pretty lucky of me because uh, uh, Night Stalkers, right, they take my Inspiring. So I managed to take it out, which was pretty lucky of me. And then I turned to face both sides. Yeah, to, for me, if I roll average, that's already pretty lucky to me, right? Because you 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 plan your game based on roughly average results. So nothing fantastic here. So uh, um, my ogre palace got moved back, and then the Naeus charge charge the terror instead to sort of buy my ogre palace got a turn. So what happened this time for the the elo high hot? I charged it. I dealt twelve damage, but I re I load rode quite low on the nerf. I didn't even waver it. So 12 wounds on it. And notice my knights finally after 3 turns, it is ready to get into combat finally on the 4th turn. And I was, I think I made a mistake here. I was so frustrated that it was so far away from combat. I just moved it all the way up and that allowed the mind screech to charge me, which is what he did next. I'll go from left to right once again. So the left was uh, almost one. Let's see what happened. I think the Scarecrows with its uh, weak attacks it managed to finish off the Elohi. Yeah. Um, the Mind Screech continued to poke at the Knights, not being very effective. And now here, the Planet Apparition charged the Knights as well as the, the Terror charged its flank. So what happened here? Quite a nice opportunity from my opponent. The terror was down here in front of Naeus and uh, the front arc was just able to see. And being a titan is really tall, it could see the knight. So it uh, pivoted 90 degrees and this, I, I, I think it bounced back. I'm not sure if it had nimble. So even if it doesn't have nimble, it will do the one inch disengage. And then it could pivot something like this. Yeah, and just charge it in and hit the corner, sliding in. Well, the damage uh, should have been very devastating. I think 20 hits, uh, 30, 20 attacks on the side, 13 hits, and about 8 point something wounds. And the planar apparition, well, I guess it's about average. Uh, planar apparition, 4 attacks, about 3 hits, about 2 wounds, yeah. So it's about average. Uh, needing 6 twice because there's dread, so he only managed a waiver, which was pretty lucky for me. And over here, the Bloodworms one-rounded the Elohi, right? With the Vicious Aura, with uh, this star is probably Bane Chant, it one-rounded the Elohi, so oh, that really hurts. I think 25 attacks, 16 hits, no, it's 30 attacks, uh, hit, hit on 4, so 15 hits and uh, crushing 2, so wounding on 3s. Uh, so that will be 10 wounds of the 5 misses. Yeah, 2 and a half of them will be 1. Uh, one. So you reroll that. 2 thirds of that hitting, that will be about almost 2 wounds. Yeah, so 12, needing 6 twice to kill it. Not, not in the realm of impossibility. Actually, there is dread, so you only need 5 twice to kill. So that is an uh, unexpected result. So now I knew how devastating Bloodworms were because uh, this was the first time his Bloodworms attacked because the first one uh, just died without attacking. So I moved my Knights all the way up only to be charged by the uh, Mind Screech. 5 attacks but no crushing eh, if I'm not wrong. So at least it didn't strip the Tundras. 
So let's look over here. So my sisters charge the scarecrows and with so much wounds on the scarecrows, I'm pretty confident my sisters would eventually take it off. The knights probably killed the mind screech over here. The abbess wavered the planner apparition. Uh, which is pretty lucky while my knights moved back so that uh, it couldn't be killed by the knights again. Uh, it, the apparition couldn't be killing the knights. Yeah. And my nails charged into the flank of these uh, bloodworms. And I think the bloodworms healed quite a lot of damage. Notice uh, from 12, it went all the way down to, to how much it is? 8. It dealt more damage, but didn't kill it once again and didn't even waver it this time so my knights charged the mind screech but only managed to waver it and then this thing happened we measured and this was just within charge range of the ogres and i think it's probably a flank I'm not too sure probably a flank yeah and so on his turn charged past and killed the ogres uh, can't remember what killed the knights, probably some shooting from here or here. Uh, probably this is the banshee. <coughs> so it killed the knights and then the ogre palace guard is killed and this uh, scenario is dominate. So now he has this big horde in the center and uh, it was really scary because uh, with a planner apparition healing and he has life leech and I don't know if this is the unit with the, the, the scream shot item with extra life leech. And then now if you look at things, um, um, this knights couldn't get into the, the blood worms because I still need to take out the planner apparition first. So my nails is looking all the way at the other side. My stupid little knights here are still, is still fighting the mind screech so I only had the abbas to charge in. And very thankfully this is another stroke of luck. My abbas dealt quite a lot of damage. Let's see, 8 to 11. Um, 8 to 11 is 3 damage. Well, I think that's uh, pretty normal. Pretty normal, I guess. Um, but I needed that 7 to waver and I got it. So bloodworms are really strong, but the wavering point for hot is at 18, which is on the low side. Yeah, so expectedly... Uh, the sisters took out the scarecrows and the knights took out the the planner apparition. The sister was an MVP, managed to hold the bloodworms for one round, and the knights here managed to take out the mind screech. And so the mind screech decided to stop in a last ditch effort to try to win the game. It decided to stop the knights from coming in. So now he's gonna take a charge from these knights and this uh, Naeus in the rear. So managed to kill it, and so my sisters went. My sisters, uh, Abbas on the Panther, man, tried to charge at this uh, individual, probably a banshee. Uh, fluffed all my attacks though. So in a, uh, in his effort to preserve points, he just uh, ran away. So that's the end of the game. There's quite a lot of learning points here, so I'm gonna go through them. Let's see. So if you receive the uh, Alpha Strike in the terrain from the Elo High, that makes all the difference. And my Elo High would have just died like that, right? So, and then with his uh, Scream Shard, Double Planet Apparition, Healing and Life Leech, you will be able to heal quite a bit of it back. So yeah, receive the Alpha Strike in uh, terrain whenever you can. And uh, yeah, be ready for a Nimble Flanker. So if there's something monster hero on a dragon that's on the side uh, if he's able to turn move 20 inch up the board and turn and then you have nothing that can charge him that's uh, really going to be a lot of trouble for you so always try to deploy uh, something that can uh, charge it if it does that 20 inch forwards because uh, it's quite easy to see because he has to move in a straight line 20 inches and then turn so if you have something uh, on the flank to to guard that 20 inch forward position, then that would uh, make a lot of difference. Okay, but also take note he might still present the flank to you anyway because if you charge the flank, you don't stop him from you, you stop his flying, but you don't stop him from charging 20 inches still. 
all right next point so i did I, I was feeling so happy about doing that ELO, early low high 20 inch move that I did the same thing with the girl panthers and it just died to shooting. So don't expose your chest unnecessarily to shooting. Even though it looks like a good idea to move 20 and threaten the flank, it's just gonna shoot you off like a fool. So uh, my knights all the way on the right flank, it might be a good idea to just march 20 inch or what you call on the double 20 in, uh, 16 inches move your full distance up because it's so far from combat uh, and it, it's it's facing the way it's facing because of that forest near the corner so I have to face uh, strictly forward to get past the forest so I should just move 16 inch so I, I had that fear that oh if I move 16 inch I wouldn't be looking at any opponents but when I move 8 and look at my opponents they're not in range for me to charge next round anyway so and I spent three turns just moving forward, uh, which was pretty dumb. So this was a pretty obvious one. I need to know which of the opponent's units are hammers. I didn't even realize the bloodworms were hammers, and I didn't even realize the reapers were so strong going into this game. So that should should not happen, right? Yeah, and uh, I thought that uh, my opponent could use uh, one unit of chaff to screen the, the hammers. So the two hordes of bloodworms, maybe one of the bloodworms stays in the lake and the other unit have a uh, have one of the scarecrows in front of it because uh, there were two scarecrows on the side uh, against one unit of reapers. So maybe one of the scarecrows could come to the middle, stand in front of the bloodworms, uh, move up to get charged and then the bloodworms just one round things, right? So uh, when you set up your defense, set it such that uh, when you can flank the enemy if they don't kill your unit. So my, my opponent did just that with the terror. So so when I didn't kill the terror, he could see the flank of my, my knights. Was it the knights? Yeah, and then he could charge it. So, which brings me to my next point. Titans and monsters are really tall. They can see over a lot of bases and being square, it could do that little, uh, it, it could reach me with one pivot, but I could still call it a bit of a corkscrew charge because uh, his base is squarish enough that it can turn almost 90 degrees on the spot. So this was a major mistake from me, in, uh, I feel, because uh, my, my, this, what's it called, the Ogre Palace Guard, I think it could have easily, uh, it was 9.8 inches from the enemy, it could have easily pivot a little bit of its angle to be out of the enemy's range. Yeah, and one thing to take note, my Naeus flank charging the bloodworms doesn't stop it from charging anything else. Yeah, so if I charge it in the front, it has no choice but to counter attack Naeus and I should have uh, seen that if he charged something else, I I only had that Abbas on Panther to charge it, charge it back in return. So I was really lucky there that I could manage the waiver. If not, I might be in trouble uh, with the bloodworms in the middle of a dominate scenario, one rounding anything that it could see and it could kill with planar apparition support. So that's the end of the game. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the battle report and had some learning points and takeaways from this game. And I hope to be on a more regular schedule now. The, the coronavirus situation has a uh, messed up my work a little bit so I had to do some adjustment and hopefully I'm getting back on track. Uh, my microphone gear has uh, broken down a little bit so I'll I hopefully the audio for this video is still okay and well I'll see you in the next video. Please like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. Thank you.